Electronegativity, the most important thing you're going to learn about this entire course. Electronegativity is an atom's attraction to electrons in a chemical bond. It's a scale of zero to four based on how much something wants to gain electrons. For example, nonmetals like hydrogen, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, phosphorus, sulfur, and chlorine have high electronegativities. That means from 2.1 on up. Hydrogen has the lowest electronegativity of any nonmetal at 2.1, and fluorine has the highest electronegativity on the entire table. Nonmetals gain electrons because their atoms are strongly attracted to them. On the other hand, metals have low electronegativity. Lithium is 1.0, beryllium is 1.6, boron is 2.0, it's a metalloid. Sodium at 0.9, magnesium at 1.3, aluminum at 1.6. Metals have low electronegativity, therefore they don't tend to gain electrons. On the other hand, we have ionization energy the energy required to remove the most loosely held electron from an atom in the gas phase. Otherwise known as, how easy is it to remove an electron from the atom? Well, nonmetals, hydrogen 1,312, carbon 1,086, nitrogen 1,402, oxygen 1,344, fluorine 1,681, they have high ionization energy. It takes a lot of energy to remove an electron from their outermost energy level. But metals, like lithium at 520, beryllium at 900, sodium at 496, magnesium at 736, they have much lower ionization energy. So they tend to lose electrons when forming chemical bonds. Nonmetals have a high attraction to electrons, therefore they tend to gain them. Now the gain of electrons is referred to as reduction. Now that may sound stupid, because when did they ever call gaining stuff reduction? The reason it's called reduction is because the charge is reduced to a negative charge. All right, it started off as neutral. If you lose one electron, it's negative one. Lose two electrons, it's negative two. The charge is reduced to a negative value. On the other hand, metals have low ionization energy, which means it's easier for them to lose all their valence electrons. That's called oxidation, which is why corrosion of metal is often called oxidation. Rust is called oxidation, because oxygen, a nonmetal, removes iron's valence electrons. Since it's a reaction with oxygen, that's where the whole name came from. Oxidation, a removal of electrons to form positive ions. Now, how this relates to the atomic radius is as such. If you go from top to bottom in a group, here, for example, we have the elements in group one, the alkali metals. Notice in their basic configuration, every time you go down one, you're going to be increasing the number of energy levels by one. Hydrogen has one energy level, lithium has two, sodium has three, potassium has four, and so on. The number of principal energy levels increases. Notice what happens to atomic radius. That also increases. So as you go from top to bottom on the periodic table, the radii increase because of increasing number of energy levels. But if you go across the periodic table within a period, this, for example, is period two. Lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, and fluorine. Notice they have the same number of energy levels. They all have two energy levels. But the atomic number, and therefore, the charge of the nucleus increases. Now, as the nucleus increases its charge, it attracts the electrons to it more strongly because the greater the charges are, the stronger the attraction will be between them. And look what happens to the radius. With a small nuclear charge, your radius is larger. But as your nuclear charge increases, the radius gets smaller as those two energy levels get pulled in closer to the nucleus. So as you go from left to right across a period, radius will decrease because of an increasing nuclear charge acting on the same number of energy levels.